Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have another makeup and murder case video. So today I'm going to be speaking about the case of Zara Baker. So Zara Claire Baker was born on November 16th, 1999 in Wagga Wagga, Australia. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, to Emily Dietrich and Adam Baker. Emily suffered from postpartum depression after giving birth to Zara, so she gave up custody to Adam. Adam took Zara to live with his parents to Giru, Queensland in 2004, and he started working for a sugar mill. Zara was diagnosed with bone cancer in 2005, and she later suffered a bout of lung cancer. As a result, she had the lower part of one leg amputated and had to wear hearing aids. Adam Baker met Elisa Fairchild online on a IMVU website, which is just a dating website. Elisa came to visit Adam in Queensland and they were soon married. Lisa previously had been married six times before Adam, and she actually was still married at the time that she got married to Adam. Zara's cancer went into remission in 2008, shortly before they moved to the United States from Australia. So Zara moved to North Carolina with her dad and her new stepmother. So they settled in Hickory, North Carolina, and Zara attended public school until she started to become homeschooled. No one truly knows, though, if she was ever actually homeschooled. It's suspected that Zara was taken out of school because of reports of child abuse. Many neighbors of Zara claimed that Elisa was physically and mentally abusive and that she neglected Zara. Two teachers visited Zara's home after Zara went to school with a black eye in a public school in Hudson when she was in the fourth grade. Child Protective Services visited various residencies of Zara multiple times before Zara died. So apparently they kind of like jumped around different towns in North Carolina. They ended up visiting a few times at each new residency. Reports of Elisa's abusive behavior had been investigated by the Department of Social Services in regards to Elisa's own biological children. Elisa has three children from two different relationships. She has a daughter from a previous boyfriend and a son and a daughter from a previous marriage. A 911 call was made by Elisa on October 9th, 2010 at 5 30 a.m reporting a fire in the back of the family house that was in Hickory. When the police came for the fire, there was a ransom note and the smell of gasoline coming from Adam's company truck. A second 911 call was made by Adam Baker and he said that Zara had been missing. This call was made at 2 p.m. on that same day. He explained that there was a $1 million ransom note that he found in his truck the night before, um, and it was addressed to Adam's boss and landlord, Mark Confrey. So Adam explained that they called earlier because of the fire, and maybe whoever had started the fire may have done so to distract the family and kidnap Zara. He said maybe the kidnapper confused Zara with his landlord's daughter. Adam said the last time he saw his daughter was at 2.30 a.m. He said that he left for work early in the morning and did not return until after Zara went to sleep. So Zara was missing and Lisa was given a polygraph test in which she failed. She was asked if she had hurt Zara and if she knew of anyone who had harmed Zara and if she knew who wrote the ransom note. On October 10th, 2010, search and rescue dogs went to search the bakers, houses, and cars. The dogs gave positive alerts to the scent of human remains on both of the bakers' cars. The police also took swabs 
from what they thought might be blood. On October 10, 2010, Elisa was also arrested for various crimes, communicating threats, writing bad checks, larceny, and driving with a revoked license. So these are all crimes that were unrelated to the death of Zara. She also was charged with the obstruction of justice after admitting that she had wrote this ransom note. Amber Fairchild, which was Elisa's daughter, had um, testified at a hearing saying her mother told her she was thinking of leaving North Carolina the day before she was arrested. She also said that her mother was involved in an online relationship with a man from England who sent her thousands of dollars. Elisa Baker's aunt, Buzzy Winkler, told reporters that Elisa had told her Zara died after being sick for two weeks and that Elisa and Adam had dismembered her body and hidden her remains. Why would, on earth would they do that? <laughs> that is so suspicious. Elisa's aunt said she'd been sick for two weeks before she died and then when they found her, I guess they didn't know what to do. I don't know, maybe call the police. If she was sick, well, don't you think they would have taken her to the hospital? However, Elisa reported that Adam dismembered Zara Baker alone after she died and that they both hid her remains. Elisa also told the police that Zara had died September 24th, but she was not reported missing until October 9th. Apparently, this man named Eric Gein, who is a crime memorabilia dealer and owner of Serial Killers, Inc., um, wrote a letter to Elisa in jail and she wrote back twice to him sharing information. She admitted, we didn't, we really didn't kill her, but what we did after the fact is kind of horrifying. It makes me scared of him. So she's claiming that she hadn't like dismembered her body. She's like putting this blame on Adam that he was the one who did it and she just helped him hide the remains. Elisa told her attorney that Zara's prosthetic leg was left in a dumpster and that she, Adam, disposed of it at Fox Ridge Apartments in Hickory. They did in fact find the prosthetic leg and they were able to match it to Zara. In November 2010, Elisa began to lead police to the remains of Zara. They also put some of Zara's body parts in the drain trap of the bathtub, um, which is just so disturbing. If they really hadn't done anything, they would have just called the police if Zara had truly died. And since Elisa seems to be like working with the police a lot, it seems like she is hoping to get out of jail or just getting a reduction in her sentence from helping them find Zara's remains and just being like cordial. So they found Elisa's MySpace page. The page had photos of Zara and in one photo, Zara was wearing all black and the title read, The Dark Child, LOL. Um, I don't really know if that MySpace page gave them really heavy any like evidence. I think it was just something that they found and was like, oh, this is kind of weird. So let's talk a little bit about Elisa's past marriages. So she was married seven times. She failed to divorce husbands before remarrying and she introduced her ex-husband Aaron Young to Adam claiming it was her brother but it was actually her ex-husband um, and she kept in contact with Aaron. They kept in contact through a dating website. Apparently on September 22nd, two days before the day which Elisa claimed Zara died, there was a claim of a woman who used the same social networking site as the Bakers and that she had a conversation with one or both of them about doing a murder with chainsaws. So since no cause of death had been determined, Zara's death was ruled as a undetermined violent homicide. Elisa told the police that both she and Adam disposed of Zara's remains, but according to the cell phone towers, Elisa was in the area where Zara's remains were found, but Adam was not. Investigators believe that Elisa had killed and dismembered Zara on September 24th of 2010 and disposed of her remains the following day. Elisa was indicted by the grand jury for second-degree murder with aggravating circumstances. So these circumstances were 
Elisa has a history of physical, verbal, and psychological abuse of Zara. She secreted the child from her family before and after the crime. She desecrated Zara's body to hinder the murder investigation and prosecution. Zara was young and physically handicapped, and Elisa Baker took advantage of a posi position of trust. So Elisa would have had first degree murder charge if she had not led law enforcement to Zara's remains. Um, and Adam denied any involvement in the death of Zara and police had not found any credible evidence to suggest that he had an involvement in her death. So in 2011, Adam Baker was charged with identity theft of a man named James Starbuck. So apparently James Starbuck is the husband of Elisa's daughter. So it is assumed that Elisa was involved in this and convinced Adam to take the identity of her daughter's husband. Elisa Baker was then charged with identity theft and um, obtaining property under false pretenses. In May 2011, Elisa Baker was also indicted with seven drug counts. She is facing up to 20 years for each drug charge. So on February 21st, 2013, the Hickory Police Department confirmed they found a skull that um, belonged to Zara Baker. So Elisa did plead guilty to her death and she will serve a maximum of 18 years in prison, which I don't totally understand. I mean, I know she was charged with second degree murder, but 18 years just doesn't seem like that long. She could have been sick and died. But if she was that sick, her parents should have taken her to the hospital. And if there was this, like, history of abuse on Zara, then I, then it would only make sense if Elisa had ended up killing Zara. And apparently Zara's father, Adam Baker, was deported to Australia and he took um, some of his daughter's remains with him. So it's kind of hard to say, was her dad involved in this? Was not involved. I really just can't believe Elisa only has 18 years in prison, but I'm not exactly sure with like those drug charges. She probably has some time added to her sentence, so not exactly sure how long her sentence actually is, but like the fact that they really just buried her, like dismembered her body and buried her remains instead of contacting the police. It's very strange. So that is the case of Zara Baker. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.